Welcome! You're listening to Making Relationships Work. We're a company focused on women and their marriage. We lead and teach women just like you how to grow into and access, whenever you need to, your wise woman self. The part of you who is deeply connected to your purpose, your innate wisdom and your husband and family. We teach women in marriages how to rebuild trust and connection, to work through conflicts, no matter how deep, no matter how painful, and to lead your marriage to a place where the two of you experience marriage mastery. This podcast is about learning the systems and techniques that truly work to reconnect you back into your marriage so that you can experience the freedom that comes with a masterful marriage. Since this podcast is totally free, if you're getting tons of value and you want to support us and make sure that you get more of this good stuff, subscribe below and rate and review our podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Hello, Women Making Marriages Work. Hello, our Facebook. Hello, our YouTube. I'm so glad to be here with you tonight. We are talking in a different location, you probably figured out already, but we are talking about a question that one of our wise women uh, in Women Making Marriages Work has asked me to answer, and I'm gonna answer it. She's asked me about how to navigate being married to a husband who stonewalls every time or any time she tries to talk through any issues. No matter how she approaches a conflict conversation, he has the same reaction of stonewalling and it goes for days. So what do we do? Now, the first thing we probably need to do as a team is talk about what is stonewalling and what it does in a marriage. So stonewalling is one of the defenses that people, particularly men, actually, men are 85% more likely to use this type of defensive strategy. But essentially, it's a defensive strategy that keeps the sense of having to deal with a problem away. And so what it does is if you're feeling vulnerable, if you're feeling like you're not good enough, if you're worried about what's going to come up, if you've had experiences where you haven't been able to solve something before, if you are somebody who is conflict averse, hasn't had good um, resolution come from conflict, then you develop ways to not engage in talking through hard things. And one of those things is stonewalling. So stonewalling is, the definition is, an overwhelming physiological response, which basically means that you can't engage or interact with other people because you are in your parasympathetic nervous system, which means you're in fight, fight or freeze. Now, here's the thing about stonewalling. If your partner is unconsciously or consciously using defensive strategies to avoid a conversation, that means your marriage is going in a cycle. It's in a cycle where your ability or sense of being able to solve a problem is low. Your ability or sense of being us against the world, like you're a team, is low. Therefore, your trust in each other, your trust in your marriage is low. And it starts to affect your sense of commitment to the marriage. One or both of you start to ponder or think about what life might be like with someone else. And that someone else is usually kind of fantasy based. They're not really real. Yeah. And so what we're doing in our quest to avoid really having a look at ourselves or really opening ourselves up to be vulnerable enough to have what we perceive as a difficult conversation, we're looking to be able to make it go away. Now, the problem with making a conflict go away is if you do it enough times, you're essentially making your partner go away. And when you make your partner go away, you're breaking the connection. So you're breaking that trust. You're breaking that sense of us against the world. You're breaking that sense that we will find a way through this because there's nothing more important. And so what we get is this disability or an inability to process hard things, to work through the things that could bring us closer together. We could feel good about ourselves if we were able to figure it out. And instead, we're avoiding doing it. What happens with this avoidance strategy is that we avoid through this thing called stonewalling. But then we also become quite contemptuous and we blame and we justify our own positions. We defend our own positions. We are people who are what is a good word? We're people who 
become increasingly competent at breaking that connection so that this conversation can't happen. But the thing is, is that in doing that, we're starting a cycle. We're starting a cycle that is ultimately leading to an incredible deterioration in your marriage and relationship. It might take a few years before you really feel it. But if you've got a relationship where you cannot get a sense of resolution, where you cannot get a sense of overcoming obstacles or conflicts or doing hard things, then ultimately you're wearing away at the fabric of that marriage and you're going to get some dynamics that start to build in your marriage which are not going to serve you. And you know what, my loves, they're not going to serve your kids. So you're going to get more and more avoidant of talking about those hard things. And in doing that, you're going to have an inability to process where you are, which means essentially over time, you're getting further and further and further apart. And that gap is the thing that's ultimately going to be the demise of your marriage, because you can't remember why you fell in love. Your trust is so low, you don't want to be vulnerable enough to try again. Yeah. And you're going to remember this sense of we can't do this that's going to become your story my husband is not this my wife is not that we can't do this we should look for somebody else we can't make each other happy that's what starts to come in a marriage where you can't talk about hard things and so we know from the research that men are more likely to use this strategy than women but what we do know is that if a woman does use this strategy the likelihood of that couple's divorce skyrockets. It skyrockets because women particularly don't like a man who does this strategy. They tend to chase him and they tend to try and make it work, which makes it worse, of course. But women who are actively leaving this are very disconnected then from the marriage and are, their husband is unlikely to chase them. Does that make sense? And so if you're a woman who's using this strategy, um, I want you to see the warning signs of what will happen if you don't look for a pattern interrupt, either for you or for your husband. So we know that when women use stonewalling as a defense, it's predictive of divorce. But we also know that men use it 85% of the time, um, if, if that's their go-to strategy. So what this actually means is that you're going to create a marriage that doesn't allow you to grow, to heal, to repair, to do um, those kind of rituals that masterful couples are able to do where there's this sense of baby, if you're upset, then we got a, we got a problem, we've got to figure out. Instead, it becomes you're upset, I don't want to know about it. And up goes the, the barriers and the connection gets broken and the space widens until there's a quietness where the woman's no longer pursuing, the man's had some time to downregulate, and then we go back together and pretend it didn't happen. But the worst thing about that is it becomes like a pile of dirt under a rug, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you might try and avoid that pile of dirt under the rug, but you'll inadvertently trip on it, like it's a piece of Lego on the carpet, and it will start the whole process again. Your husband will flick into stonewalling, you'll flick into chasing him, the two of you will have this interaction until you both give up. The issue won't be dealt with. And then it becomes another piece of unprocessed hurt, unprocessed pain, resentment. It becomes debilitating. And that is the piece that is so important for you to understand that you have a decrease in your ability as a team to work through hard things because you cannot get through this toxic cycle, which is designed to protect. So let's talk for a minute about why we do this and how it protects us. There is an unconsciousness around why we use the stonewalling, which means you can't engage in a conversation with me. We do that so that you go away. We don't want to know about what you think about me or us. We don't want to talk about it again because it ends in pain. We don't want to have to come to grips with the vulnerability of being right or needing to accept influence or needing to do things differently or to grow a little bit because that feels vulnerable. That feels stretchy. And some part of me has had an experience that has been adverse or many experiences that have been adverse. And I haven't been successful. 
And when I'm not successful in something, I don't want to engage in that process again. And that, of course, is the terrible thing when it comes to relationships is that we actually do need to learn to grow together or we end up doing this instead of doing this. And this is separation. This is divorce. This is affairs. This is betrayals. This is self-medication through addictive based soothing techniques. And these are the, this is why you're here, because you're in a version of this. And so if you've got somebody who will not work with you and you are trying to make it better, but it's not working, I want you to understand that there is a totally new way that you can be approaching your beautiful husband to have a different experience so that he can come closer to you and have that sense of, I can feel safe enough to talk to you about what it feels like to be me. Because essentially that is the antidote of stonewalling, is building a skill set in vulnerability and being able to talk about what it feels like to be you. And what we know is that stonewalling is terrible. It's terrible on relationships. It's terrible on individual sense of self-esteem and growth as a human, building that muscle and growing into a matriarch or patriarch. When you're stonewalling, you're depriving yourself of the opportunity to grow wisdom. And that is why it's terrible. And so I want you to, to take a moment and think about what needs to happen in your marriage. Think about where you are. Think about where you're going to be in five years if you do nothing. Think about where you're going to be in one year if you do nothing. Think about what your kids are learning from this modeling of not working things out. Think about the impact that has on them. Think about them in 10 years time when they're in therapy and they're talking about this time of your marriage where they watched you as parents circle something and not figure it out and move further and further apart and what their story is going to be about that. And then I want you to think about doing something different. And that is watching my masterclass and committing to the growth that's required to interrupt this pattern, to interrupt this cycle, this this experience the two of you are having has to break. It has to be reconfigured and rewritten so that you get a different outcome. Because the longer you cycle in this, the further apart you get, the further apart you get, the more likely you are to be divorced or separated or living in a loveless, lifeless marriage. And that's not why you're here. That's not supposed to be your experience of this life. It's not supposed to be your husband's experience of this life. You're looking for a new way and my love, you can be that change that you want to see. The first thing you need to do is watch the masterclass. That's going to give you the beginnings of the framework that allows you to see things differently. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to watch the masterclass. You're going to commit to being the change you want to see, no matter what it takes. Yes. And you're going to stop pursuing your husband. And you're going to stop engaging in this cycle that means you're separate, separate, separate because it's not working for you and I don't want you to have that. All right, my loves, here's the thing. If you're an avoider of conflict, you'll be worried that you're going to lose your relationship. Your relationship is the most important thing to you. So in a way you feel like your avoidance is keeping you safe in your marriage. But what we've already talked about is this is happening. The erosion of trust, the erosion of commitment, the sense of it's not us against the world, sense of the distance, the loneliness, the heartache, the never going to be the same. So you try and then control even more so that your marriage is safe. But of course, the irony is you're doing more and more damage with this gap that's widening between the two of you. And so here's the thing. There are healthy ways to cope with this. The beginning of the protocol of how to do that is in my masterclass. So please go ahead and watch that. It was so nice to talk with you tonight. I'll see you later this week or early next week for another Facebook Live. Welcome to our community if you're new. We've had an influx lately. And if you're coming, if I'm coming to you via our YouTube or our podcast um, connection, then welcome to us here. I'm delighted to be here with you. I encourage you to watch that masterclass. Let's be the change we want to see. I'll see you later. Talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you're feeling fired up and you're ready to grow and you want to know more about how to do that, here is what I want you to do now. I want you to watch my Marriage Masterclass. 
This masterclass will show you how my clients have turned their struggling marriages into thriving marriages, even without their husband's buy-in. How my clients have gone from cycles of poor communication, disconnect and loneliness to being teammates and soulmates with their husbands again, even after they've already tried everything. And the proof of the system my clients use to start transforming their marriages in minutes, not years, because life is too precious to waste one more minute in an unhappy and unfulfilling marriage. So if this is what you're looking for, I want you to click the link below and take